Hello and welcome to another PTS CAD video. This video is going to focus on a discussion that teaches us how to use the freeform modeling tools. Much, much of the modeling we've done so far has been uh, parametric. We've used sketches to extrude into 3D and we can manipulate those 3D designs and that's great. But occasionally we want maybe more artistic manipulation, more natural kind of like clay warping of walls of shapes and forms and curves and and the freeform side of fusion allows us to do this this allows us to make us more exotic curves things that we don't necessarily have exact measurements for but we can freely sculpt them and, and, and have them look really good and uh, take advantage of the fact that sometimes we don't need perfect measurements but instead want a nice um, interesting design so what we're going to do first is unlike our standard procedure where we create a sketch on some plane the first thing we'll do is hover over this purple button called Create Form. Or if I go to the menu, it's also the third option, Create Form. So as soon as we do this, our, our design view changes slightly, and our timeline has this form uh, component in it. So in this design menu, the create menu is still there, but now everything's purple because essentially what's happening is the default shapes that we might have been able to make beforehand can also still be made here, but we'll have access to their individual vert vertices, their edges, their faces, uh, and we'll be able to manipulate them all together or individually or in any in many different ways. And there are a lot of different tools um, to make this happen. We're going to start off with something very, very simple. We're going to start with a box and see how we can kind of uh, play with one and, and manipulate the different basic components. So I'm going to select box as an option. It does ask us to choose a plane to start on, so I'll start on the XZ plane like we have before. It then asks us to draw a rectangle that represents the width and height of that thing. So I'll collect it to the origin. And notice that it is not the two-point rectangle, which is the default behavior for uh, the parametric design, but instead a center point rectangle. We've chosen a center and now we can mark a length and width. So I'm going to go ahead and do something like a width of 30 and a width of 60. So it's twice as long as it is wide. And the last step is it automatically puts a default height. And so this is sort of like a box, but the reality is that the edges are curved significantly. And we see that there are many different faces. And so we can say again, a vertex is a single point. The edge is a single line that connects two vertices, and a face is the uh, a closed shape created by multiple edges connecting to one another. And so by default here, if I want to resize this, I have a lot of different options. So this uh, um, creation was kind of uh, the standard, two sections high, and so if I want to modify, so I want to change this in some way, this is the most common technique. We create some base shape, we modify it by manipulating things and moving things, and then eventually uh, we end up with the form that we want. So the modify button in the modify menu, we can choose either the edit form button directly or in modify, that first option is uh, edit form, which is basically this button. I click it. It gives us a lot of different tools, and so our edit form uh, menu is on the right side here. The first transform mode is useful. Um, is what are we seeing when we select something. So I'm going to just pick this face right now. And notice there's a bunch of tools that pop up. We have um, a ring that lets us rotate. We have arrows that let us translate, which means move. So forward, backward, left and right, up and down. Rotation lets us rotate around one of the three axes. And then we have these squares and these lines that let us scale or resize in a particular dimension or multiple dimensions at once. And so this is what the default kind of icon has. It has everything all at once. But if we just want to see one aspect, transformation, the movement of something, or the rotation, just so the rotation of a particular thing, or the scaling of a particular thing, then we can always pick individual transformation modes. So for example, if I choose translation, notice that everything but these boxes and these arrows have shown up. Because if I grab the, ar the arrow and drag up, it pulls the shape with it. And so that's a translation. We're moving. We can also type in numbers, and that's a, a kind of a manipulation we might be able to make, um, depending on what we're trying to do. Uh, and then a rotation and, and scaling are very similar. So now notice that there's only the rotational options, and so if I grab this and rotate, we can get a warp pretty quickly by playing around with this in degrees, right? So again, I'm going to leave it back at zero. And we can do the same thing with scaling. Is the same. Scaling is sometimes harder to see, but scaling means kind of expand the size. And so on a flat surface, if we scale it, I can scale it in one direction, up and down, 
and that's a very it's very much like a translation, but very very slow. So I'm saying it's three times as large as it was before. So that's not this is not a great choice. Um, I I also might be able to scale in two directions, so up at an angle, and that blows it up quickly in both directions. And so that's a 2D surface. And I can always rotate my camera to get different points of view. And so um, depending on what we're selecting, the the scaling may not be the best option. And then again, we can have all three at once. That's the default behavior. Coordinate space, we're not going to touch too often. We're essentially going to use the default, which is world space. All the numbers and measurements are based on the world that we're in. The origin is still 0, 0, and, and, and everything goes from there. The more interesting other tool besides transform, transform mode is the selection filter. By default, all is selected, which means that I can choose a face, an individual edge, which is a line. I can choose an individual vertex. And each of these can be transformed in some fashion. Or I can select multiple pieces. So I can choose a face and an edge. And this may seem, I'm going to hold shift. And now I have two things selected, a face and an edge. Now, this is not always a good thing to do because how you might manipulate a face, which is a 2D shape, is not necessarily the same way you're going to manipulate an individual uh, line, which is, I guess, two-dimensional technically, but still thin, infinitely thin, and so we often don't necessarily want to mix them, but we can if we want to. So the all option lets us pick anything we like. But if I want one thing in particular, for example, if I, if I don't want to worry about accidentally choosing a, wrong, a face, but I only want edges, right, then I could choose the edge selection filter. And now when I hover over a face and click, nothing happens. If I choose over a vertex, nothing happens. But if I choose an edge, it lights up. So I can pick it. If you pick an edge, It'll highlight that one edge. If you double click on an edge, it'll attempt to grab the rest of the edge in one direction if it can. So here, when I choose this line, it gives me the double side, so that's that yellow. If I choose this line, then the entire ring is selected. And you see when I click and hold, it shows it is yellow. So I can also pick, for example, let's try if I pick this one, I'm betting that it'll be the top one and bottom one. And there it is, right? And so depending on the shape, you may get more or less edges selected when you double click. But that's useful. Similar for the vertex. If I choose vertex, notice now all the, all, all the vertices have like little bubbles. And I can pick an individual vertex. And I can move it in around. And of course, I can hold shift to select multiple vertices. So for example, if I picked the middle one and this left one here and I use the arrow, Notice only those two vertices move. Of course, they drag other parts with it. And this is what's kind of different um, from the parametric design is that uh, every change we make to any portion of the shape is kind of either subtly or very directly affected by, um, by those transformations. And so this is very much like a piece of clay or a balloon where if you stretch it, you're going to see what's on it stretch along with it. Or a piece of clay where if you squish it down, you see the rest of the clay warp around it in some fashion. Now, the further away it is from the direct point, the less impacted it is, but, um, but we have that kind of control as we see fit. So I can also choose, for example, um, faces only. So now I can only grab faces. I can't grab an edge. I can't grab a vertex, and that's convenient. Um, so maybe I want to choose all four top edges. So I hold shift. I got to make sure that I'm not clicking through it because you can click through it. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. And I always know because where it says T-Splant Entity on the right, it says four faces have been selected. And I can see that those are the four faces selected. And now you can see that I might be able to pull them up and stretch them upward or maybe pull them sideways and that'll warp the whole thing. And the result is that I get this kind of uh, curved shape. And again, what happens is everything else is impacted as we do this, and we have to kind of deal with it and be intelligent about how we make our selections. The last option is body, which is the whole unit. So if you want to scale the whole unit, so usually I use body only when I'm ready to scale down or up the entire shape. Once I've warped it in the way I want, and I realize, oh, it needs to be bigger, I can scale the entire body as one thing. And that's a useful thing to have. You don't have to do it, but it is a very um, helpful choice to make. So let's go and undo this real quick. And I want to point out something. Um, the intensity at which the rest of the shape is affected um, has some default value based on the transformation. But there is an option, a menu in our edit form called soft modification. If I turn it on by hitting the check mark, there's three different types of transitions. Smooth, which is a kind of normal flow. A linear, which means an exact, the distance or the point is, is directly affected. And there's one that is, uh, Bulge, which means that it, it tends to affect it near the middle portion, so and, and then tapers down the sides. Um, but as soon as you have this on, what you can see is based on what you have selected, 
the lines and the edges and vertices have changed color. Now the, red, the lines are very dark red and near the bottom they're kind of slowly turning to a lighter red. And the idea is that um, what we're saying is how should the rest of the pieces or features of the shape be affected by the manipulation we're going to make. And by default there is some set value and they call it weight zero, but if I decrease it to a negative number, then there's less impact. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll see as I do that, these bottom lines turn white. And if we compare the top to the bottom, the suggestion that they're making is that these red uh, edges will be impacted significantly more than the paler or whiter edges. So these whiter edges, these paler ones, are less impacted. And because I've made a very, very strong negative weight, which means basically if I pull this up, only these lines will be impacted. Nothing at the bottom will be touched almost at all. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to bring it up. Now you can see that these have stretched quite a bit, and the, this part has stretched very, very little. The, the, the transformation is affecting only the ones that are more impacted in red. And, and so with faces, sometimes it's hard to tell, but we could do the same thing if I chose vertices. I pick this vertex. Notice that only these four edges are going to be impacted significantly because of my negative one weight. But this side of here is essentially all white, or not even not even white. There's, it's, it's basically faded off that this side is un, unaffected by that manipulation. Now, if I increase the weight, let's put it back to zero. Um, and I try it again. Now we see that there's still an impact, and there's a little more pink along the way. And if I increase the weight, let's go up to one. And with a vertex, it's usually pretty sharp to change, but you can see that now this is significantly impacted. But still, this side is not, not completely. Right? It may be subtly, but it's not. So it is a little bit further now, but not as much as it was before. Right? And again, this is with, 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 the, with a smooth transition. If we do a linear transition, then that might change the impact. So now we see those lines. If I do a, a bulge transition, that also might change the result. So we have to play around with that as we see fit. So typically, I don't mess with these too much. And we can also say, well, how far in terms of distance is this impacted? So right now, the distance is 46.78. If I increase that number, we might see some of these changes occur. So here we go. Let's try this putting this at 70. And now you notice how all of these have become, in fact, 70 is so large a number that every single edge and vertex is affected. Let's do something like 55. And there we see that you, because I chose a lower vertex, it kind of wraps around and affects the bottom one, but this vertex up here is kind of unaffected, right? So if I pull this vertex out, we can see what happens, right? All these lines were impacted and they were pulled along with it in some way. These were essentially unimpacted. They looked sort of changed mainly because these lines are being dragged, but significantly less so, right? And so this is, gives us a lot of control. If I choose uh, an edge and I pick this edge, because my distance is so high, I'm going to lower the distance to maybe like 25, and now we can see that essentially nothing but that edge is affected. And so some of the side edges are a little bit affected. Um, and we can play around with that. Um, and again, for the extent, there's different ways of doing it. It can actually do it by count of faces. It can do it by a distance. So if I do it by face count, it basically says three faces are affected by this line, right, on every side or, or whatever number we choose. Uh, I, tend not, I tend not to mess with anything but but distance, but we can play around with those numbers and do different things with it. Right? So now if I shift, if I put the weight instead of that to 1, but to like 0.5, so these lines are still going to be affected. Right? They're, they're bright red, but other lines not so much. So now if I drag this whole thing up, you can see that these dark lines are resisting the transformation, but the red ones are not. So this one curved a lot. This one curved a lot because they're red and they're affected by it significantly, right? So I've made this kind of shape. And so to make a shape that's this smooth and round um, parametrically would not have been easy to do. There's no combination, potentially a revolve or a sweep or a loft, but those things are hard to do when you want smooth, ex you know, exotic curves, right? This is very easy for me to warp and pinch and so on. So now if I go like this, let's bring this this way. And now I have this kind of, this is almost like a couch cushion. You can see, sort of see it, like someone would lean against it. Or if I'm mimicking a tooth, I could probably replicate a tooth by, by using this freeform sculpting um, method. All right, so the idea is that this is a great way to make exotic shapes. I've taken a cube and generated this kind of weird um, 
creation, this word model. Now, what happens is this is still in the form view. As soon as I click finish form, now we're back in our original parametric view, and if we look in our folder, there's the body that was generated from that form. It's one unit. Now what's going to happen is, are we going to be able to just sketch on it? Probably not, because every surface is curved in some way, and so it'll be really hard to be able to draw because there are essentially no flat surfaces. Could we blend it with other objects? Sure, that's definitely a possibility, but it's limited in what we can do um, because it is a kind of different shape. If we want to go back and manipulate it in some fashion as a form, we can always go to our timeline and uh, double click on the form to reopen it as a form. There it is, now we're back in the form. Or, we also have the option, I believe, of right clicking on the body. Um, actually, maybe not. From the body, we might have to right click on the form and then say edit form. So we can click edit. And there we are back in this. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and delete this body. Let's pick a new form again. So I'm going to click the form tool. But this time, instead of using a default cube, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a uh, cylinder. And so cylinders are different because um, even though I can do the same thing as I did before, let's go to the home view real quick. I could choose this. It lets me pick a circle because the cylinder is basically a circle. I'm going to go ahead and put 50 millimeters as my uh, uh, diameter. Um, what happens is the height, we can control, but it's an open shape. It's not a closed shape, so this is not like a balloon or a sealed piece of clay. It's an open, hollow tube. And so let's put the height at 150. So there it is. And notice that we do have these vertices. And in fact, I'm going to undo it one more time and try it one last time. I'm going to do a cylinder. I'm going to choose X and Z. I'm going to choose a center. I'm going to do 50. And the height. And notice what I can do. I can type in the height, right? the diameter, I can put the height as taller, I can put it to 100. But I can also choose how many faces go across this. Right now it says, you know what, across the 100 millimeters there are four faces. If I double this to eight, then we'd have more faces. The more faces you have, the more control points you have, but the harder it is to work with the piece because there's, now there's lots of segments to work with and it can warp very, very easily. So we have to be careful. Similarly, diameter faces means, well, if around the diameter, the 50 units, how many faces show up? So across this cut, there are 18 slices, you might say. And so if I did something like 12, now there's more squares. The more, again, the more slices, the more faces there are, the more edges, the more control, but the more responsibility you have to be careful about warping and, and manipulating different parts. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now what happens is if I leave the form, it's not going to be a body. A body is a closed 3D shape. This is not closed, and this is kind of like a hollow tube. And so what one option I could do is to close this using a particular option called um, fill hole. So the fill hole option basically says if you give me one of these forms, I will do what I can to weld or snap together these edges and vertices. So I'm going to click fill hole. And there are different modes. It says, well, where's the hole? Click on the, an edge that's tied to that hole. So I'm going to click on this one and notice how it warps immediately. It folds over. The bottom is not. The bottom is still open, but the top is welded shut in some fashion. Where it says fill hole mold, this is what determines what it looks like when we do our edges. Um, so for example, if I switch to fill star, what we end up with is these curved ends and one giant face, which is not bad. The disadvantage is that the face is one unit, so we can't really manipulate it in segments or slices. So often a useful one is collapse. And this is kind of what you might think is the default, where each one is a kind of a wedge or a slice, which is good because it gives us a vertex in the middle, but it's bad because it gives us like a sharp point. So we have to decide what's appropriate, what we're going to do to that end and, and decide what's a better option. And then the kind of reduced star is a weird blend between them. There's also a check mark we can select called maintain crease edges. And this basically says, well, if you have a sharp edge, like the bottom was when it was open, instead of folding it nice and round here, we can keep it flat and sharp. And so now we have the kind of a closed shape that has these uh, lines through it. So we can do a creased edge main maintain um, with reduced star, with, with fill star. With fill star, what we end up with is one solid surface. So you could stretch it out, but you couldn't really manipulate it more than along the, the edge because there is no vertex anywhere in the middle. And then collapse is the one that's probably the most recognizable. It looks very much like a, a pie slice, and then there's one vertex in the middle. So we have to decide what's appropriate and do we want a flat edge or not. So I might keep this rounded to keep it making it look, looking soft. Um, and then weld center vertices. This, is, this one is unique for this. Basically what it says is 
Um, are they all connected or are they individually going to their own endpoints? And I'm going to choose weld because I want the one vertex to affect all of them. If I don't have it selected, when I try to stretch it upward, each slice might be affected individually. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go ahead and use modify to show you that we can manipulate this vertex. So let me make sure I have all or vertex selected. I have all, so now I can pick the center point. If I bring it up, notice every point is manipulated. Every, every part of the pie, every wedge is impacted. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the hole again without that weld, and we'll see the difference, how, it's, how it could be a problem. So let's go ahead and say fill hole. Let's pick one of the edges. Let's do collapse. Let's not weld. So here we go. And so that looks the same. It's, it's pretty much the same. Now I'm going to choose a single vertex in the middle. I'm going to do modify. I'm going to make sure I have all selected. I'm going to choose that middle point. Nope, I missed it. Let's try one more time. There it is. And I'm going to pull it up and let's see what happens. Notice how only one wedge, and how it chose that one is beyond me. I don't really know. But it chose this point between these two. And that's that's okay, but that's not what I wanted. That's kind of really screwed up. So I'd have to pick another vertex and drag that one up. And now this is the second one. So they're all individual components. And in fact, there's one in the middle that I didn't even select. And so there it is. And I might have to drag this one up, and that'll help me pull that part. So this is dangerous and can cause a lot of folds. And if your folds are too sharp and they, they blend into each other, then this tends to break the shape and it doesn't work. So we have to be very careful. So welding the vertices is usually a very, very good idea. So I'm going to undo this and do it one more time. Fill hole. Weld vertices. And there it is. And now I can click OK. And now if I grab this and I edit it, it's, it's, everything's affected, which is nice. This is the better option. So notice how, of course, now they're all being pulled up, but this one is higher because this is the, the, the set of edges I've clicked. Now if I pick this face, well, I mean, I'm stuck on edges, so let's click all again. Choose this face. Now as a unit, I can pull this face down, and, and I can get all kinds of exotic shapes. So I'm going to undo this and choose a face instead of a, an edges. There we go. So I can go like that and pull it, and then maybe I'll rotate it a little bit, and that'll kind of give it a strange warp. You know, it kind of bubbles it, curves it around, and that's kind of weird. The idea is that I can manipulate this however I see fit. That, that's the advantage of this thing. But again, now this one is still open, so this would not be a closed shape, which is dangerous. So let's close this hole as well. Um, let's finish our editing, and let's do the fill hole on this one. So I'll select maybe an edge. I'll do modify, fill hole. Um, I'll weld edges, and I'm going to try to different. I'm going to do fill star. Click OK. And now if I do modify, notice how this is one face, so I can pull it down and do what I want, but it's, it is, in fact, only, oops, I didn't mean to pull it sideways, I meant to pull it downward. Um, this is one shape. So you, I have to, you have to decide what is the appropriate manipulation you, you may or may not want, right? So now I can pull it down in different directions, and that, that allows me to make this weird shape, right? So this is a very useful tool. We can do a lot with it. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but there are many different options. So for example, making a sphere, a ball, that would be something we could do relatively easily. We can use the pre-built shape, or we could use maybe a revolve to produce a circle. But now we have the edges and vertices to manipulate and play around with. A torus is like a ring or a donut, same idea. We could give it different segments and man manipulate them in different ways. Um, then the tools of extrusion, revolutions, sweeps, and lofts, they do the same thing that they do in parametric design, except when they generate a body, the body has faces, so they can be manip and edges and endpoints, and so they can be manipulated just like as if they were a form. So we could make a complex loft or a complex revolve, and then warp it by hand as if it were clay. This is a very great tool to have. And so when you work on a project that requires more freeform design, you know, uh, more natural flowing mo curves and, and, and looks, then a free, the freeform tool is useful. Now, it's not perfect. It's maybe not as good as other three, 3D modeling software, for example, Maya, 3D Engine, or 3D Max, or Blender, because those are meant to be more artistic, natural, f uh, polygon-based freeform modeling. Um, this is a very kind of simplified version of that. Uh, because generally speaking, CAD software doesn't aim to do freeform. It aims to do CAD parametric design. But this is a little bit of both, which is a very convenient thing to have so we don't have to constantly switch out of programs. I'll see you in the next video.